Windows Server 2012 add to Storage Virtualization. Setting up a software red one in Windows Server 2012 R2. A new feature in Windows Server 2012 R2 installed by default in all server editions. Microsoft calls it Storage Virtualization and the idea behind it is somewhat familiar to most administrators that have worked on hardware red controller before. In fact, Disk Virtualization is working like a software red with better scalability, resiliency and optimization. The basic concept is to group physical disks together into a container called storage pools and to manage those disks as a single storage space. Afterward, in these storage pools, you can create a virtual disk on which you can specify a layout which is simply a red level. Storage virtualization can be configured via Windows Server 2012 R2 Saw Manager or you can use PowerShell CMD LEDs. To set up a storage virtualization in Server Manager, you have to open a Saw Manager console and on a Saw Manager console, you have to click on File and Storage Services. Now you have to click on Storage Pools. Now here you can see all storage pools available on your Windows Server. Note that the primordial is the system's default storage pool that includes all unallocated physical disks. To create a new storage pool, you have to right click on a free space and then select new storage pool. Click on next on uh, before you begin page. Now here you have to specify a name of your storage pool and you can also specify the description as well. So let me specify the name pool 1 and then click on next. On this screen, you can select the physical disk that will participate in the storage pool along with their allocation type. The allocation type can be auto or hotspare and the third option is manual. Now auto means that the physical disk will actively participate in the storage pool. Hotspare means uh, that the drive will not actively participate in the storage pool. It will take over in case of a drive failures. And the third one is the manual. So let's select automatic and uh, let's add our physical disk 1, 2 and 3 and let's click on next. Review the confirmation dialog box and let's click on create to create the storage pool. After you create a storage pool, you will be able to create one or more virtual disk inside your storage pool. Now here we have our options to start a wizard to create a virtual disk when this wizard closes. So let's close this and let's manually create the virtual disk. So let's select pool 1 and then let's click on to create a virtual disk. Start a new virtual disk wizard and that will open a new wizard to create a virtual disk. Let's click on next. Now here select your storage pool on which you are planning to create a new virtual disk. Now here we have only one storage pool and that is pool 1. So let's select it and then click on next. Now here you have to specify the name of your virtual disk and you can also add a description as well. So let's specify the name UV disk 1 and then click on next. Now here we have options to specify the storage layout. By default selected options is simple. Simple layout means this is a stripe set with no parity similar to red 0. There's no redundancy. It has a better performance and more capacity available compared to a configuration with a single disk. Second, we have a mirror storage layout. This is a mirror set similar to red one. Data is duplicated across two or three disks, increasing reliability but decreasing the total size in a half. This configuration protects data from a single drive failures or from two simultaneous drive failures in case of five disk configuration. Third one is a parity storage layout. This is a stripe set with a distributed parity similar to red file. This configuration protects data from a single disk failure. It requires a minimum of three disks to operate. So select mirror and then click on next. Now here we have options to specify the provisioning disk type. Now provisioning type can be either thin or a fix. In a thin provisioning, the volume used space from the storage pool as needed up to the volume size. In a fixed mode, the whole size will be committed from the scratch. Now select fixed size and then click on next. Now here we can specify the size of our VDisk. 
let's specify the size 50 GB and then click on next. Review the confirmation dialogs and let's click on create to create a new virtual disk. Okay, now here we have options to start a wizard to create a volume when this wizard closes. Let's click on close and let's manually create a volume in our videos. Let's click on volumes and let's click on task and select new volume. Let's click on next. Now select our disk 4 that is our OV disk 1. The total size is 50 GB. Let's click on next. Now here you can specify the size as per your requirement. Let's click on next. Now here you have to select the drive letter to assign to our new volume. By default, first available drive letter will be assigned to our volume. Now here you can specify the file system to format the volume. By default it's selected NTFS and the allocation unit is default. Here you can specify the new volume name. Let's click on next and let's click on create to create a new volume. And that's it. Let's click on close. So in this way we can set up a storage virtualization and by using that we can set up a software red one in Windows Server 2012 R2. So that's it for this video demonstration. Thanks for watching this video.